traveling the world today. So welcome everyone, Eric Catch with Century 21. Glad everyone's here. We've got some great training today. Uh, we are going to be kind of hands-on and doing some fun things. I'm going to be putting some things in the chat, uh, which I will do that right now that uh, I will put. These are all of the, the links to everything that we are going to be discussing. Uh, that you can go in. So I've got your 2022 goals, your marketing plan, your marketing, just some other different marketing plans. And so, and I'm going to go each one of these and explain each one of these uh, that you can actually do. And then a 2021 recap there. So go in, we will probably spend a little time on the one uh, setting our goals actually today and actually concentrate on them. And I'll share and kind of show what that is, what we're going to do there, because it's kind of important, um, obviously to have some type of goal, because what we have here, is a presentation. We've got uh, our goals and, uh, and, and you know, basically a goal that's not, not written is just really a wish. And so I, I shared this with, I've got a couple of people that were from tour yesterday that I shared that if we just, if we just wake up, if you guys aren't actually um, watching your numbers every single month, and doing like a little mini goal setting every single month, you can't get to the very end of the year and say, I didn't do really well, or I didn't quite hit my goal, or what should I do to improve? And it's like November, what are we, the fifth? November 5th, 4th, and so 5th. So we're at the 5th already today, and you say, you can't just wait to the end of the year to be able to do that. It's also at the same time, if you are needing to work on taxes and stuff, you can't wait till December 31st before you say, what can I do to kind of help protect some, you know, assets or do something of that nature as well. So you want to kind of start working on this every single month to be able to know where your numbers are. What did I do on January? What did I do in February? How many conversations did I have? How many listing appointments did I have? What do I need to improve? Where do I need to move? So um, I wanted to share this with you guys is that Sometimes, you know, we, we always talk about and Jared talks about it as well is that when we're busy, you know, we're, we're either we're crazy busy or we're just like really just busy and crazy. So like you want to be busy in work or just busy and crazy. And so I, I love this little picture here that Madison found that, you know, somewhere, some way we came up with the circle that uh, that actually kind of wheels the wheels and makes it a little bit easier to um, to go around. So I wanted to share this a little bit with you. And this actually. I think I have that as one of the links, but I want to share this with you guys that I, I want you guys to, to go in and say, okay, where and we talk about this all the time, guys, my business systems, my presentations, my communication skills. Some of you might be saying, you know what? I've got killer communication skills. Jessica, you're, you're way up here in the, the excellent communication skills. Some other people that we talk about my business systems, I might be a little bit poor and I'm, I need to like improve those. Most people have pretty decent mindset. Uh, if you're not, don't have good mindset as a real estate agent, then we need to change career because uh, it goes up and down really quick. Planning and organization skills, um, your lead generation and your marketing systems. Maybe that's fair. Maybe that's um, poor. But I want to share this. Like if you guys are kind of um, like, okay, maybe I'm a little bit good here. I've got good mindset. I've got my decent presentations. But boy, my lead generation right now, I'm a brand new agent is really weak. How do you wheel something up? You know, if you're like that little guy, you're wheeling something up a hill on kind of a somewhat square, rectangular, weird, um, you know, kind of diagram, it's going to be really hard. So what we're trying to do is that in real estate and over time, it, it again, it's a marathon, but you want to try to get something that's balanced. If you are poor at everything and you are this perfect circle, that's great. You just expand one little, little box at a time. But if you've got good mindset, good business system, I got good presentation communication skills. I need to work on my lead generation. I've got that down. Now, this always fluctuates, guys. Your mindset can stay where it needs to be. Your business systems are in place. But that lead generation, it's always like this moving. It's because of the technology and what goes on in real estate right now is that there's just so much out there that you just have to kind of watch. I'm not going to tell you how many business systems have we signed up for, Madison, the last maybe week since Jared James, maybe three or four. So it's been fun. So we're actually changing and always working to find out what the best next system is, what we need to do. Again, got to watch out for that being that shiny object um, that you got to be concentrated. But I want to experiment. I want to say, wow, this new company that just branched off, what do they have to offer? Will this actually fit my model as what I need? 
And so try to find something and some balance in your life. So I want you guys to take this. I want you to print it. I want you to put a little dot. I'm going to put post it somewhere. And then maybe in the next month, the next two months, I want you to print another one. And I want you to move that and see where you guys are actually at, because you need to have this ball rolling in this business to be able to continue doing uh, good business. And so we're going to talk a little bit today about our goals and what you guys have been doing to generate business. Um, here's this cute little fish that Sweet Madison found uh, that, you know, we throw, you know, when you're first brand new in the business, uh, it's like, where do you start? You know, there's so much, it's so overwhelming. Where do you start? You say, well, I'm going to start by my sphere of influence and I'm going to tell everyone that I am a real estate agent, uh, that I'm getting in the business. Here I am. But what happens there is that you will run out of your family and friends to sell houses to. And that's just what happens. The first year you sold maybe a couple homes to your family, friends, and then, then you're kind of, okay, now where do I go from here? So, you know, there's, there's one, one hook that you have, you need more. And so uh, we've got, you need like a big fish net. Now, when you look at fishing and you're trying to get this new business, there are, you know, some people have, you know, some other additional funds. Some people that they're in the business a long time and they're closing two to three escrows to five a month. You have a little bit bigger budget that you can actually play with. And we kind of shared that last week about what kind of budget and percentage is a budget that you can kind of allocate towards different things. But you have to start throwing out maybe one hook here, one hook here. And there's a lot of free things. And we talk about them. And we're going to go through a little bit on this. So possible lines in the water. And if anybody has anything else that you want to share, then feel free. And this actually is in your PDF. So no, don't have to feel like you have to write all these, uh, I think, 60 something things down. But there's your sphere of influence. That's what you're working on first. You are going after them. You are trying to um, just express that you are a good real estate agent. You've got either a new career. I, I know I've shared this with some other people and Tim and some people in the past that we want to be real careful not to say, hey, I'm brand new. You know, when you go out, like maybe, yeah, obviously your parents and your good friends, they know you're brand new at real estate as a real estate agent. But I don't want you guys to go out and start you know, telling the world that you're brand new, like, hey, I'm a social media post. Hey, I'm brand new at real estate. Try me, try me. You know, it's kind of, you know, you'll have to break into this, um, this opportunity to generate uh, more, more business. Um, oh, sorry. That's me. Hey, I'm on a webinar. Oh, is that who I think it is? Oh, my brother's here to visit. I haven't seen him for years. Okay. Sorry, <laughs> but I am recording it. So, no, so yeah. Okay. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. All right. Wow. Give him a quick hug. I couldn't, well, I couldn't see. He had glasses, a hat, and a big old black mask. So I couldn't tell who it was, but I thought it was him. All right. Um, so, you know, your sphere of influence, your past customers. Now, some of you go, past customers. I don't have any past customers. I will tell you, Jerry James basically trained us so hard a couple of weeks ago that your transaction really starts when you close a transaction. Does anybody remember? What, uh, how much money that on an average that is an average client for the lifetime of a client that we talked about? What's the number? Is that like 130 something? I think it was 177, 170 something thousand dollars is what a, is a, what a past client you know, means to you, you know, of that. So uh, incoming referrals, uh, I will tell you guys that, um, that I'm starting right now too is another system just as a, a pro tip. Now, you, you, again, you, you got to start these and stop these when you feel like you're doing them. But um, we just got a, how much was that check? $8,000. We got an $8,000 check that I had a buyer that I did show him two or three homes, maybe two years ago and here locally. And he also wanted to go over the hill into Nevada. So shout out to Tori Lynn, who uh, closed the deal. She's a Colo Banker side over there in Nevada side. And I referred her to him too. I could have just said, great, I'm going to keep sending you these homes. Great. You know, nothing's happening here. But I asked the simple question, do you have another location that you're also looking in? And he said, yes, I want to look over in Dayton and over there on the other side of, of by Reno and kind of down, down the hill a little bit by Tahoe. And I said, great, I've got an agent for you. So I've sent maybe two people yesterday. We've actually referred some people to Texas, referred to some people because I'm asking for that. So that $8,000 just gave me $8,000 more to say, thank you very much. Have Shannon go spend it. 
I mean, they gave me some monies to now put towards my marketing of just coming in for what am I going to do with uh, these out, outbound and incoming referrals for them. So what I'm going to do is I'm starting actually a Facebook group and I'm starting uh, putting together all these people that I keep getting emails from all over the world from them, uh, world, well, most of the United States of just saying, here's this new listing. Here's this one. I've got deals going in in Idaho. I just referred somebody over to um, Ukiah, Ukiah, because that agent actually referred me and a client coming this direction. So you just, you want to like start building that. Remember in your CRM, CRM database, when you, we broke all those out, I just entered a new one of just referring agents in my CRM database. So now I can now every month, I can go and set up a little email, say, don't forget, I'm in this area, boom, boom, boom. Here's what it is. Anybody buyers come in this direction. And then also going outbound as well. Um, the three things is brand new agents, expired listings, FISBOs. I just checked the new listings this morning on FISBOs. And then we have like, um, there's a couple of them that are in Nevada City. There's a couple of them that are in Loomis, but not a lot of FISBO action going on. Um, you've got sign calls, um, you know, just you know, uh, your uptime office duty, whatever you want to call that, uh, you're, you're, you're sitting in the office, other agents, networking groups. I joined three investment networking groups in the last three days. Uh, so that's been very enlightening of kind of watching kind of what's going on. Farming, website, advertising, social media, um, you know, personal clubs. I love a, a gentleman that used to work here that is retired now and he worked and he actually went and joined the golf for the, um, the Lake of the Pines Golf Club is what he did, or team, or whatever it was, or the men's club, and he got so much business from that. And I know another agent that's here working that some of you know, and you know that he works totally with the the um, men's service group there in Lake of the Pines, and he gets where do you think he gets most of his listings? If you look at his clientele, they're usually elderly kind of people that are probably retiring or or moving away, and most of those people are coming from that work group that he does with the with the group there at Lake of the Pines. Um, so find some clubs, some, some organization. Tim, I think you just mentioned you were you know, joining something. Um, I've got so much stuff from just uh, coaching. Let's see, I'll give a shout out to Jessica for coaching soccer. So uh, the professional girl she is. But um, I've gotten so much business from basketball coaching, soccer coaching. So Jessica is trying to recruit me back into the coaching career. So because uh, I do have a pretty good record. So that was great. But they are only five year old. So I got to be really serious there. But I do get pretty intense. All right, um, you know, website clicks, um, personal clubs. Let's see where I was. Like former coworkers, investors. I kind of watch this one, guys, on former coworkers. Watch what transpires. I know that we have a lot of um, uh, seasoned agents out there, and there, when this 16-page contract comes and pops out, uh, I've seen it before. I've seen it when the new contracts come, and there's some people that are just on the fence and going boy, do I really want to relearn all of this? Do I want to kind of uh, uh, hit this again? And you will see these people starting to retire. So if you kind of ever hear the word that somebody in our offices or somebody says the words like, yeah, I'm kind of thinking about retiring in a couple of years, you take a mental note and you're going to ask them and say, what, um, what, do you, what, do you, what are your plans with all your book of business? You know, what do you, what do you plan on doing with that? And there's ways you can, we can talk off, off this, this webinar here of, of things you can do, but you, you can start then teaming up. I know a girl over here at Coldwell Banker to my left, she actually works and still working the book of business of a agent that retired 10 years ago, who now has actually since passed away, but she is still working that book of business from that one particular person. So there's some options and opportunities there that if you actually get a really good relationship, working relationship with one of these agents that are thinking about uh, retiring, or slowing down, you can start taking some of their business and, and, and giving them some referrals and kickbacks and things of that sort. So divorce probate, haven't really hit this pretty hard, but I know that there's one agent that's uh, down in Auburn that I know that uh, most of her business comes from probate attorneys. And, and so she does really good with that. Um, we talked about core 100, which we could get into a little bit later, church groups, meetings. Anyway, guys, you can see that uh, open houses is a free one. So you can't, you can throw this net at a lot of this stuff but you can do free things is what you can do here too. Um, oops, pass over minds. Oh, let me, did I get there? All right. Um, you know, how do I determine what should I start in the targeting and answer these questions? Does this group of people have specialized interest and needs? Do they have a desire for your services? Uh, who can you create the compelling reasons for them to do business with you instead of someone else? You know, that's kind of tough. If you've got some agent in Nevada City who's like, 
you know, whatever it is, 40 years of business and she's got pretty dominating that kind of territory. How do you break into that? You know, so it's kind of tough. So you want to say, how, why are they going to choose you? So you have to come up with your own business plan. Uh, who can easily reach individuals within the group? What group is large enough to produce the volume of business you need? You know, what group is small enough for your competition is likely to overlook? What group are you currently a part of or know someone well who is? Are you targeting prospects in your financial position to afford your services? Do you enjoy working with these people? Don't do something that you don't like to do. Like if I completely hated soccer and hated baseball and basketball, I don't think I'd really be going to coaching it. But since it's kind of a passion and you know, you bring kids and grandkids and all sorts of fun things to, to, to do the table. So you enjoy doing it. Um, can you see yourself creating various services to offer this particular market? So these are questions that you kind of want to go. And again, guys, this is all in that, uh, those PDFs right over there. So I want, um, got Kayla coming in. So I want to talk a little bit about kind of some of these direct things that you can do and what activities to give you guys some ideas of what you can do. So you got direct mail. So it's like, well, what do you send in direct mail? And I will tell you right now that in 2020, direct mail completely almost just got just when everybody was thinking of the pandemic and the COVID and spreading of germs and thinking, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I went to my mailbox and we went shopping and we like put clean groceries, bleach tablet, you know, so we were cleaning everything because we didn't know where this stuff was coming from. And so direct mail kind of died off and now it's kind of coming back. So, you know, you can have some of that direct mail, give you some ideas there. Uh, obviously, telephone contact just to give them a call. Um, I know that my wife's trying to really push that a little harder on me because I'd rather just send somebody a text real quick. And she keeps telling me just to pick up the call, pick up the phone and talk to them, which I get better, um, better traction that way. Face to face opportunities, um, you know, doing, you know, just doing open houses and going and walking around and we can do another open house class because Jared kind of has some new things on that too. So does Tom Ferry and advertising. Uh, you can do local market newsletters. I did a really great um, a video that I finally got done. It's been months in the working and I wanted to get it done and I've had so many people that have uh, come back and actually uh, expressed Thank you for that. And I think um, we shared, I don't know if I shared that last week, but one of the listings we took on Brewer Road, I, we've been there before, but I really feel because of that marketing update, that one of the first words out of his mouth when I sat down with him last week was we really appreciated that market update. And then, you know, two days later, I get a phone call from him saying, hey, let's go ahead and put, put the house on the market. So you can do some internet and emailing websites and blasting uh, that actually can do that as well. That would be less expensive than uh, postage. Uh, special events, first time home buyer seminar. Guys, I used to do it. You know, you could meet with, uh, I used to have um, a title rep person come in. I had a lender that came in. I had a pest company, Gold Country come in. And I just had this little small, right in this little room in here. And we'd probably have five to 10 people that would come in and meet uh, for a home buyer, first time home buyer seminar. I did it at Placer Title uh, up there in Grass Valley when I very first started in their big conference room and had them host it and had them, I think they might've provided some coffee and some goodies. Um, so these are ideas that are doable. I will tell you on a pro tip on that one is that there you rarely, I scheduled them all the time, but I rarely did them uh, I think I did maybe three or four because most of the time I would put it like a three weeks out uh, and then people would go, I would like to come to that. And I'd say, well, that's great. Let's go ahead and schedule that. But I can maybe share with this information. You know, I don't want to make you wait three weeks just to get more information about this. So let me share with this instead of us. So it was a nice lead source that I was able to get them to come in without even having them come in just to actually talk to them and send them my presentation or meet with them to go over that and say, hey, let's just meet one on one. That might even be better. And that's what we do anyway. So you got videos bomb bomb happy grasshopper you know blogging these are just different companies that you could subscribe to if you want uh first i'll put them right here community events church events online webinar um uh again you hear a bunch of ideas but your our company does provide which the hud hud papers on january 1 which is your anybody that you've sold the house to in the last uh, that during 2021 uh, our front office staff, they will send out this letter with a closing sheet uh, saying, hey, guys, here was your uh, here was your final closing sheet for your tax purposes. So those are fun things that you guys can do. But contests, senior discounts, you know, the list goes on and on and on. You guys stop me if you guys have anything because I'm just I'm rolling here. So um, and then per potential certificates. There's so much you guys could go out there and get um, certified in. Uh, we got people that I know they're certified in senior living, but if you can, then you can do the niche. And so, you know, we've got 
agents who are certified in senior living and they're just make, making it and doing a great job and, and promoting that, that they are. So promote what you guys are. So let's go with the 2021 recap. Uh, this is in, in there as well that I need you guys to go down because to really fill out this goal sheet, you guys are going to really need to know what your gross commission income was for last year. You're going to need to know what your business expenses. Um, some of you who just started this week, it's like, I don't have any business expenses. So this is great. You can start totally from scratch. Um, you've got your what closed transactions, uh, listing appointments, uh, listings taken, listings sold. Uh, and I and I felt just a, just a, another pro tip that was real easy for me is that in cloud CMA, whatever CMA thing that you're working on, if you're not calculating your numbers like every single month, and again, I've got numbers everywhere that you guys, that I got numbers of what I, what I need to do and how many people I speak to during the day. And, but you want to take those numbers and um, what was I gonna say? Um, Oh, what I did in the cloud CMA, I went to my cloud CMA and I just went to all of last year and said, what, how many CMAs did I actually create? And for those individuals, and you can come up with the total amount of numbers as well. So whatever, whatever CMA kind of tool that you're using, uh, you can actually have that as well. Go back and look at your Google calendar if you want to see what, how many you did, but you want to know how many that you sold, how many did you take? Um, you know, I just took a listing, what was it last week? And they already, they already took it off the market because they're moving back in. So you know, but again, she's, she's a client for life because she loves me and we'll just keep, um, you know, one day it's just what I call a deferred commission. Uh, buyer appointments, buyers worked with, um, buyer sales, average sale price. This is one that's kind of going up, your transaction, your average commission and average hours work per week, which we're going to talk about that. So I want you guys, whatever net, whatever hooks that you guys are doing to try to find these individual people, I need you to take it in a spreadsheet and I want you guys, now here's the fun thing about the spreadsheet. It's already done for you. Don't recreate anything, Tim, because I know you're into spreadsheets. So you probably already have one like this. But in on the, the bottom of Jared James' goal sheet that we're going to look at here in just a minute, which is this one, down here on the very bottom of this actually has two links down on the bottom left. That one of them is this. The first one you're going to open is that one. The second one is Kathleen Rose. The second one is this particular one right here. This is super critical and crucial for you guys to know your return on investment. Um, you guys can't keep spending a ton of money. There's a, a unknown, well, I'll just say it right now. I was spending a ton of money on Zillow a long time ago. I mean, a ton of money. And then actually more money on realtor.com, just buying leads and buying leads and buying leads. And, and it was profitable. You know, I might spend $50,000 on leads of realtor.com during the year, but I got $150,000 return on investment, which was great. But now I'm weaning away from that thinking, okay, do I really need to spend the money? Because, and I've noticed I don't really have to because I've got all this other time and business and things of just reputation that I don't have to go spend that. So I need you guys to go and say, did I, I went, I expired. I have my postage on that. I did my calls. I did my social media, I did my farming. You need to know where these leads came from. So I want you to go to the, all of your last 12 months. And maybe there's only four or five houses. Maybe there's a hundred houses you've sold, but I want you to actually say, where did you get those people from? And make sure in your, your CRM system that you are putting what source those people came from, because actually the office is actually requesting that for from you to know where they're coming from. But you need to know where they're at. So whatever lead sources, mine totally looks different than this. This is Jared James marketing, by the way, is what that is down below. But you want, and most of your business should be coming from this last one right here, sphere of influence. And I think my number was pretty big on the sphere of influence of people. And then there, and I actually broke it out and put sphere of influence referrals. I want to know how many referrals in my sphere of influence actually giving uh, in, in produ producing and providing from them. And if I if it is like zero, I need to work a little harder to actually get these people to give me more referrals. And so what's interesting about this number right here, you guys, when you go to retire, you are creating a business. And when your business and you're ready to retire, you can take these forms into somebody and say, okay, to the Tim or whoever it is that you might be in Jaina and people and say, I'm retiring now. This is what I can do. This is what I've done. Here's my track record for the last 26 years. Here's the numbers that I've been tracking. And I've been tracking these numbers hard since probably 2017, I think is where they're at. So now I can show this is how much business came from my sphere of influence. Here's this year. Here's this year. Here's this year. How much do you want 
to buy my business, my book of business from me. Now, most of the time, people aren't just going to offer you a bunch of money straight up. They might. But a lot of times, though, is that you have referrals and you just give some referrals as you retire and then you just get some money uh, from them for so many years. So that's important to know where your business is coming from. So let's jump into this. This is the marketing plan and outline right here that I want to uh, to. It's again, also attached in the notes. So those who came on late inside the notes there in the chat, it's they're all there. They're all links there for you that go into a Google uh, Drive. You can open them up. You can change them. You can you know switch, do whatever you want to do. But you guys need to have a marketing plan. We've already started creating our marketing plan for 2022. Um, but you need to have it. So it's just broken down. So I know exactly. And I've been doing this for years off of the Tom Ferry plan. But what am I going to do in January? Where am I going to send it to? What type of money? What re re you know, return on investment that I'm looking for on this one? Uh, you know, what's my result? So you need to kind of track that down. So you get done with January and you go, okay, what worked and what didn't? What do I need to do and what do I need to pivot and change? So that's kind of important. So this actually breaks it down. That whole marketing plan is January through December. So cruise through and, and, and utilize that and fill that out and take some time. You guys need to take about an hour worth of uninterrupted time, put the cell phone and you know, turn it off and sit there and say, what am I going to do? Uh, and it may not be a bad idea to actually do this with, with um, the significant other, a, a coworker in the office and say, guys, we're going to go sit in and do this. And, and I think we have a little bit of time to do this uh, today because we're getting close. So what I want to share is that here's Jared James's um, uh, one. And I'm going to go into this in just a moment here in just a second. So this is going to break it down to how many conversations we're going to need a, a week. And as an extra bonus that Jared James gave us is that I thought it was really nice as a social audit. So this actually goes through too and say, what am I doing right now? And you can check what you're doing in these um, social media networks that you guys can actually go to as well. So let me... Um, let me go into Jared James right here. Uh, everybody can see this? I think, believe it, no one said no, so we'll go for it. So what you want to do is that here's your 2022 goal. So this is a GCI. Now, I don't know what you, know, you guys, what your gross commission income is, but I don't know what you want to do. So let's say you just want to say, hey, I want to make $100,000 of gross, you know, but that's actually... That's, on, that's about 10 houses, maybe somewhere around that range. So maybe that's a good goal that somebody wants to do. So you got uh, 100,000. And this is what's going to be important. And on that cheat sheet that we gave you that um, Madison put together on your uh, 2021 um, kind of update, your review that you want to do is that how many listing appointments did I go on? So if you say, hey, I went on, um, you know, I went on 20 listing appointments. Oops. Hey, hey, hey. 20 listing appointments uh, last last year. And then you say, well, how many did I list? Now, this is a big, interesting number for you guys. If you guys, for me, I'll go in, I probably did 100 listing appointments last year and I probably got maybe 90, 90. So my percentage is pretty high. Uh, and that's because of timing, because of just expertise, because of just, just longevity in the business and, and the track record that I have for that. Some of you going into a brand new, you know, it's, it's tough. So get that presentation and, and shout out to Tim for, and I think Jane and a couple other people that have actually reached out to me and Christine, you've been uh, texting me all week. So thank you very much. I appreciate it. Uh, so you know, asking questions and saying, what do I do? I got a listing presentation to come up. Help me, help me make this work. So if you went to 20 listing appointments and let's say you got 15 of them, that would be a nice, nice percentage of that. And let's say that, well, some people took their home off the market and whatever it might be, but let's say I took 15 of them and I've got, you know, sold eight. Now in today's market, this should be probably close to 12 because, you know, things are selling pretty good if they're priced right. So my closing percentage was about 60%. And so that's where you get. So this year I want to sell. And you guys, if you guys already opened that up and maybe some of you are working on that right now and just click that link and you can start filling this out with me and kind of put what you want. But you got insert number of how many, how many listings do I want to sell? Well, I sold 12 last year. So maybe this year I want to maybe go with like, you know, maybe 16 you know, maybe let's go with 16 houses, you know, that I want to do. So this is going to tell you that if you're going to do 16 based on your sales record going on what you did last year, you need to go to 27 appointments that you're going to need. Now, 27 appointments, that might sound like a lot because that's a couple, you know, 
that's a couple of months that you're going to have to go on. To me, you know, if you know, you just that that seems for me and for where I'm at my tenured business, that seems like that's that would be easy to do. But some of you go, wow, that's a lot. Where am I going to get 27 people to actually go, you know, sell? And some of that marketing that we talked about with throwing that net out, some of it has to be directed to the listing side, and some of it has to be directed to the buying side. Brand new agents, you know, it's like almost a hundred percent, just like buy, 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 buy your buyers, but you got to take that. So I know Sarah, who's uh, on vacation today, and she's going to be watching this. Shout out to Sarah that she's in some castle. I think she told me she's either it was either the city or she's sleeping in a castle tonight. That actually is important. Where now she has her first listing, and she can leverage that first listing to get more listings around her and around the neighborhood. So make sure you have some marketing approaching both 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 sides to get that twenty seven appointments. So, and then, so that's what I need right there. So if I go to my buyers and go, Hey, um, how many potential buyers did I, did, did I have? And let's say, you know, this is going to be kind of a harder number to, to reach out, but let's say you had 40 buyers and then you worked with, um, let's say 25 of them finally came to your, your, you know, your appointments and stuff, and you got shared and let's say you show sold. And I guess if this is a newer buyer and you had 15 solds and you probably are working with buyers, but I like a 50, 50. So let's say that you sold 12 of them. And I think that guys, you know, it's list to last, but if you were to balance on this, where you sold 12 listings and you sold 12 buyers, that's great. Um, and I would say this percentage is probably going to be a lot less because uh, you know, and that's where I'm really pushing it to try to get that referral because you guys, you're going to have 40 people are going to say, yeah, I'm interested in buying. And then you go, great. You're super excited. You write them down. You get them in your CRM system. They're my, my best friend on a 10, 15 minute phone call. They, they certainly sound like they're moving here and you never hear from them again. You know, so what happened? You know, where, where did we drop the ball or did they just, just stop, you know, stop looking and they decided. So eventually they might respond back to you and say, yeah, we had some family issues. We're going to put things on hold. So I've been doing a lot more texting plans and I had three people that we texted uh, this week and two of them actually texted me back um, out of the three. So that was nice testing some new marketing things, which is kind of fun. So I got a 30% accuracy or, or a success rate there. So this year I want to sell how many you know homes do I want to sell to, to buyers? And again, I'm just going to say, guys, I'm going to keep it nice and round. Since we did 16, I want 16. So that means that I need to have 53 buyer appointments to actually get my 16. And this means that I need to have 2.2 uh, listing appointments for the month. And I need to have 4.4 buyers per the month. Uh, that I need to find and I actually need to go out and show. Now that doesn't mean 4.4 buyers. That means probably that I'm going to need to be having 20, 25 buyers to come through my system to be able to go out and actually show these, you know, four and a half people, you know, on this. So these are the numbers that we need to look at every single month. Do we need to adjust this? Am I killing it? Where am I at? Your CRM system should actually have a tracking goal for you. So my, oh, I don't want to show it, but it, it shows a tracking goal where it tracks kind of where I'm at with my numbers, how many conversations, how many phone calls I've had, but you got to call through the system because they actually do, or you can enter them into the system. And then it generates and shows where I'm at, at I'm lagging behind on my, and it usually really goes off of your, your adjusted or your gross, gross commission is where it's actually, am I lagging up, am I down? So my numbers actually for the sales of my homes this year, actually, we were looking at this a couple of days ago is actually down, but we look like we're going to hit the GCI is going to be higher because obviously we've sold more expensive homes and the prices have gone up. So this is kind of what you need to do here. You come on back up to the top. This is uh, how many weeks. Now this is kind of a kicker part. You know, I don't know, you know, how many people are going to work all 48 weeks, but uh, generally, you know, sometimes you at least take a couple of vacations of a couple of weeks here and a couple of weeks there. So maybe you do, you know, maybe you take, um, you know, maybe you're going to say, hey, I'm going to do take two weeks off, or maybe it's a month off. So, you know, so maybe you do, hey, I'm going to take 44 weeks because this will actually kind of go into, oh, it didn't do that. Air function divide program zero by zero, uh, number of conversations needed. I don't know, there's an error here, guys, so I'm not sure why, but this is basically should, maybe that will work in a minute, but maybe I got to spread something out here. Nope, um, we, got a, we have an error. So maybe it's an error on your side, but basically you can do the simple math that you can actually divide this um, and maybe you have two, seven appointments. And it, it usually tells you how many conversations that you need to have during the week to actually get that during that month. So check that out, utilize that. Um, 
fill that out. And then down on the bottom, here's your last 12 months. That was that one I showed you that you need to come in and say where you got all your buyers. So those who are brand new, you know, you don't really have to mess with this because you don't have a 12 month track record, but you can definitely push forward to actually get this, uh, this in, in plan. Because if you don't have this guys, it's just a wish. You just need to have it. It just business just isn't just going to come to you because you're now in real estate. It just not, you know, for those who are in it 10, 15, 20 years, you know, things will come to you. Now, you know, Christine's got, you know, three or four years now under her belt. I think, uh, let's see, who else is in here? Cheryl, you've got a lot more too. So it will start coming to you when you get your sphere of influence. People will just all of a sudden pop up and go, hey, I want to sell your home or come sell my home. I go, okay, where'd you get my number? This is great. Well, a friend of my years, da, da, da. So it's important just to be able to have that longevity and have that little marathon. And I think I shared this with you guys by running by yourself, you can run faster, but when you run it together, you can run longer. And that's, what's important about having a group of an office group of a, an assistant, your TC people working you, because I can tell you right now that, you know, that people who are just doing really, really good on kick, kicking it is uh, Jaina. Jaina's doing fantastic for the first year. And that, and it's because she has a, person in her ear that helps her all the time and it's not me it's vicky <laughs> so so vicky will just tell vicky. tell right right so I love her. She, she motivates you she also puts you down and and will 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 tell you the truth she doesn't really sugarcoat anything if you're messing up or not doing something she'll let us know but she's actually and i love that because she actually drives jana for success and she actually pushes her harder on that. So, you know, find that group, find that trainer, come here more often, whatever it might be, but just find people who have that same mindset that are going to help guide you and help push you through and utilize Jessica, you know, and people of, and, and I think I see, I think I've got, um, Kaylee from our lender is here too. So Kaylee's here. So utilize them, utilize them and say, how can you help me motivate me to be able to get to where I need to go? So I might go to Jessica and say, Jessica, I need to have, you know, 15, 16 sales. Jessica, how are you going to help me? You know, Treya and, and Kaylee, how are you going to help me get to my 16 sales of my listings? And they're going to come up with different ideas and they you know, might work with you. And so go share that with them and they might come in and go, okay, how are you doing? And you'll have like this mentor or this person that, that you'll need to report to, which is really quite nice. All right. Questions about all of this kind of fun stuff. I know I kind of blew through it kind of quick and 40 minutes of blasting fun, but uh, any questions you guys have on any of this stuff? Did anybody get a chance to do it? The links are working over there in the um, chat. Links working? Yes, people checked yep. on us. Okay, good. So you have what you need. So um, I'm going to ask you, so Jaina just is walking in here. So that's cute. So Jaina's walking in and on the phone. She is a multitasker. <laughs> so I'm going to ask you next week, who actually, you know, who has them done? And who's worked on them to actually get them done so you can go in to next year knowing where they're at um, and where you need to be at. So questions, thoughts? No, you guys are all good. All right, I'm going to stop uh, sharing and I will stop. Thank you guys for being here.